You reign. You see, much of what I'm saying now will not make sense to many people until they come. They are already faced with the beast, and then they recognize that they have always been in the system of the beast from day one. If you are gullible enough to belong to the world, there is a test coming for you. But you see, this brings a, a good opportunity for the body of Christ, who is it, the greater in the eyes of God, to, to express her ministry. To express her ministry. Because like um, the story of the Samaritan comes to play out um, in this case. Very important that the Samaritan didn't just walk by when the, when the Jew was laying by robbers. When the Jew the covenant individual was willing by robbers. In other words, we're looking at when the nations have been willing by the robbers that have defined their status quo. That's what the enemy is doing. He's going to willay the nations. He's going to ruin the nations. And that's why we are where we are in both the first world and the third world. In Nigeria today, I hear that a liter of petrol is now 1,300. And that goes right through the um, the scale when you are going to the markets. Everything that you buy now, the price goes up because they are telling you um, that the price of oil is high. So we are, we are seeing this thing going to place a wound on many nations. Nations are going to be wounded. They will just manage to exist out of the turmoil that the, the quest for global dominance places on their shoulders. That's why Christ makes a call. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. That statement, that promise, is actually in the order of Melchizedek. We will find rest when the order of Melchizedek begins to find expression. And this order of Melchizedek requires that the lesser is blessed of the greater. This order of Melchizedek requires that the church of Yeshua Hamashiach, do you understand? brings a blessing to the nations and this blessing has nothing to do with money this blessing does not have anything to do with the transfer or the the exchange of money the blessing as what it is is a divine empowerment that enables the blessed the blessed you know there is a blesser and there is a blessed the blesser releases the blessing and the blessing is the divine and, and enablement or empowerment. It's, it's intrinsic. It becomes an innate experience in the blessed. It allows that person to prosper in the will of God. It allows the nations to prosper in the will of God. So when the nations have come out with lame by armed bandits, you have seen the religious political armed bandits. They have willain the nation, extorted the nations, deceived the nation, wounded the nations, beaten up the nation to stupor. That's not the time to walk past. That's the time to give those broken nations the blessing of the Lord. There's the blessing of El Elyon now. That's the blessing that the priests of El Elyon, the possessor of heaven and earth, gives to nations. So in their broken state, they are blessed and empowered to prosper in the will of God. What is the will of God here? That all men are saved and they are brought in the knowledge. They are brought into. They are come into the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth is actually that Yeshua is Lord. And when I mean Yeshua is Lord, I mean Yeshua is worthy to be believed and obeyed as a matter of policy amongst the nation so we are looking for christ compliance we're not just looking for salvation from these people no we're looking for christ compliance amongst the nations and until christ compliance is achieved no nation will indeed walk in the blessing that he receives from the blesser so the greater is the blesser the lesser is blessed of the greater i'm saying all of this to help us see the posture of the church in the years ahead. I want you to recognize that much of what you see today in the Western experience is going out. Much of your churches will become just the way the churches were in, or the churches were in um, Europe. Most of them have become gymnasiums. They have become malls. Do you understand? Much of the churches you have today in the, 
in the under the western capitalist christianity experience will become government owned gymnasiums government owned malls many of them will become government owned theaters where the true church will be, will be persecuted so that's what your general overseers are building they are building persecution centers people will come and sit down and see the church persecuted do you understand people will come and sit down around these domes and watch the body of christ the true body of christ persecuted the nations round about them will jeer and rejoice because nobody will ever want to go back to the experience that the western capitalist christian proponents promoted do you understand that's exactly what the enemy have set up if you are gullible you'll be running after them you will think that what they are giving to you is the truth but this is what it is deception is rife the enemy is, is all over the place now expressing he, himself and his character to deceive but this is the opportunity for us to be discerning do you understand we need to really embrace the, the gift of the holy spirit the gift of discerning of spirit so that we can indeed give expression to that melchizedekian order the order of melchizedek is very important because it requires that a people will rise who will present bread and wine there's something about the, the samaritan here he presented bread and wine bread and wine I want you to see the relationship between the Melchizedek, the priest Melchizedek that holds the template for the church, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach and his body. And I want you to relate it to the Samaritan today. The Samaritan didn't just walk by. He looked at the willing man and ministered to him. So the time, the time you see the nations broken, that's the time for the true church to rise. Do you understand? The time you see the end. Because, you see, the Christian churches, they don't see these things. They don't see these things. All they know is how they want to collect that. And here's what they are even saying now. That if the system gets worse, they want people to tithe more. When the system goes bad, increase your tithing capabilities. <laughs> when the life got worse, they increase the tithing. They increase their giving. They increase their sowing. When the system goes bad, increase your sowing. <laughs> That's what the Levitical people are saying today. That's what they are saying because all they know is mammon. Mammon is the spirit that inspires their service, their religion. They are not even serving anybody. They are serving themselves. Mammon is the spirit that inspires service to self and self-service. And That's what has been the pain of capitalist Christianity. Many people are still giving and paying to these systems because it, they believe it works for them. So their attention is not to light up the world. Their attention is to survive, survivor, self-survival. And that's what has sustained capitalist Christianity is greed and covetousness from the followership and the followed. Do you understand? That's exactly what it is. Listen to your best general overseer or man of God. You will see that he twists everything into the forays of money. Go from all the denominations. I'm speaking to people in Christ Embassy. I'm speaking to people in Winner's Chapel. I'm speaking to people in, in Redeemed. I'm speaking to people in all these mega churches, the New World Order churches today. When your preacher preaches, he moves it to the realm of money. At the end, he uses whatever he preached. To bring money out of your pocket. That's how you define the messenger of mammon. They, they, they don't concern themselves with how they want to prepare the nations for an encounter with God. They don't concern themselves with how they want to bless the nations. In fact, it is through that their ministry, the nations have walked steeper, more into the realm of a cause. It was while these ministries were growing very big, mega. It was while these ministries were in their service for many years, enriching themselves. It was while this was going on that the nations began to break down. The collapse of Nigeria has happened despite the proliferation of these big ministries. That same gospel that they have been preaching cannot be the same gospel to repair the nation. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? So whatever we are doing today is going to talk the people through the transition that the nations are presently experiencing. There is a transition, it's a religio-political transition that is happening. What was of no use shall pass away. In fact, I saw a text just now that I want you to see. It's very important that we look at it because um, those that collected the tithe died. Those that collected the tithe died. The tithe that Melchizedek collects is a tithe given to immortality. So if we successfully arrange a situation for the nations to pay their tithes into the kingdom of God preaching church, which is operating in the immortality, immortal priesthood, immortality, ah, my God, immortality flows into the nations. My God. So it is immortality that flows into the nations that shows us that shows us that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached for a testimony to the nations hmm. so the preaching of the kingdom of god to cities is actually the communication of immortality to the cities the goal is to establish the cities in, in christ's compliance so that christ can demonstrate his claim on the cities he will empty their hospitals he will empty their prisons he will restructure their educational system. He will strengthen their homes. There will be proof that the realm or the vortex of immortality has overshadowed the nation. And that's what the church is actually bringing. Wow. King. You are mighty. You are mighty.